Feel free if you want your kids to sit with you or they can go out. We have a great children's church and uh, you, they can go out for that. Our services usually don't last too long, so we're either way. We're a church family and uh, we're glad that you're with us today. You know, I was, I was trying to push this message all week back and forth. I just realized that I just took a deep breath and realized I might have to make it into, into two messages. So, uh, it's probably what I'm going to going to do, but I, I, I want us to, to realize that we live in such a fast-paced society, and everything that spins around us, I, I, I feel like it's it, within an hour, within 20 minutes, if we, if we have the messes, the music, everything comes together, it's, it's uh, in a way diffusing, and then you got to go back out into that busy world again. So I want us to look at today the God's Word, where we, we just need to take a deep breath, we need to find a way to slow down. We're going to see that through his word. And to pay attention to everything that's going around us. Man, that's hard to do. But we're going to see how we can do that in, in God's word today. Just for you. Just the area that you need to have peace in. Or the area that you need to slow down in. And we're going to see. Actually, we're going to look at a passage. Isaiah chapter 40. And we're going to look in uh, verse 31. A, a, a very familiar text. And sometimes... I stay away from really, really familiar texts because I think people uh, or we kind of just have heard them so much that we don't really pay attention. So I want you to see this verse in a different way today. Many of you might be familiar with it, but it's Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. And uh, let's pray. Father, Lord, we're grateful that we have this time together. Lord, how that Bonnie led us today through your word and the music. And Jesus, that, <clears throat> Lord, I don't know where people are struggling today. I don't know where they hurt. But, Father, we have victory when we see you. And even though the trial might still be going on, we know there's a heaven. We know that you're real. We know that you have purpose. And we know that you give us this peace that the world knows nothing about. So, Lord, just speak to us today in a way that, Lord, we know is so powerful, your spirit that will come to us all in the same way, but everybody, we need to hear from you, Lord. Jesus, all of us in a different way. So, Lord, may we slow down and hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 40. In verse 31, again, this is a verse that many of you are familiar with, but God's word says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So let's look at that first few words. But those who wait on the Lord. You know, we need to slow down. Sometimes things happen through the week that, that I, I kind of wonder where I'm going with uh, with the message in and then the Lord just something happens and it brings like a title or brings something together. And a, and a few days ago, uh, I was driving, I was getting off the exit on the freeway. And many of you have faced the same thing that, that I do. That there was a homeless person there and they have a sign and they're asking for money. And, and if you're, you're here visiting uh, with us, I feel like what's a couple dollars and this is who we are as a church that... You know, it doesn't hurt to give them a couple dollars. No matter what people say, at least that's me. So whatever you do, you do. So I pulled up, and again, I saw the light was getting ready to change. There was somebody behind me. And, it, and I, I calculated it didn't take me any more than four, maybe five seconds. I got a couple dollars, put it in one of our, uh, I think I've got one up here. Yeah, one of the, the, the life testimony books and put the put the dollar bills inside of that and uh, gave it to the guy. And I said, hey, Jesus loves you. And, and I was getting ready to take off. And again, just, just, just in a few seconds. 
And the, the guy behind me was in a truck. I'm in an SUV. And, and he couldn't wait. He just flies out around me, goes through the lights, turning around. And I'm like, I mean, it, it was just surreal to me because it was just a couple seconds. He saw what I was doing. And he just totally ignored it. Took off. Light was turning red, so I just had to sit there again. But it was no big deal. But I'm just, I get to thinking, you know, what is wrong with people? And then, not only that, this is where the message comes in. So then I, I went further. I was in a shopping center. Not 20 minutes later, the stop sign going out of the shopping center, and then there's a light. So you got a stop sign that's angled. You got to sit there. Maybe there might be a few cars behind you. And then there's a light to where cars are backed up going out of the shopping center. Well, I'm at the stop sign. I couldn't move because at the light, there's four cars or three or four cars that are lined up. So I'm stuck there. The guy behind me is like, I'm like, I can't. What do you want me to do? And he still, he cuts way out behind me and flies down the other way in the shopping center. Now, this is all within just 15, 20 minutes. I'm thinking, what is wrong with us? Us, we, 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 we need to take a deep breath. We need to slow down and we need to pay attention. And you know what? Society is so fast paced that we can't do it on our own. You know how you look at how that you can save time? You know how we look at how we can save time today? Well, we've got the computer. The computer wasn't good enough. So then, it, then it, from the computer, it went to the cell phone, which is an unbelievable thing that we all have. But that wasn't good enough, so then they, then they had the text message. And then now we have Twitter and Snapchat and Facebook. Blah, blah, blah. I don't even know half the things that kids know to get on that can do. Everything to do what? To help you communicate faster so your life will slow down. Has your life slowed down any? You know, you might think I'm, I'm just like something's wrong with it. Well, I'm sure so many of you do, but, but especially my kids. But... Uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I have an iPad. I don't, I don't even have a computer, I have an iPad. And then I don't have, uh, I don't have a Facebook account. I don't have Twitter. I even got to the place where I was watching so little television, I canceled the cable, and if some of you have this, I got what is called Apple TV. And so Apple TV, if you don't know what it is, it's just like, it, it's just like a bunch of apps and you can decide what you want to get a whole lot cheaper than not telling you what to do, but this is what I do. And, and because I only watch at the most two hours of television all, for, for a whole week. And you know, my life seems to like flow. So my question is, right as we look at this, even, even, now here's the catch with this, even if you would say, you know what, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna just, you know, get off of Facebook for a month and see what that does. Well, if you're, you know, and you know, it's so funny, the kids don't even use Facebook because their parents are on Facebook. So. <laughs> That's over. They don't even use it. They've got a whole other way of communicating. But you know what? Even if you did that, do you know your life would still be really busy? The only way, and I challenge you today, that you can live different because you, as brothers and sisters in Christ, is the only way to slow down. Everything that's going through your head today about your family, about your job situation, how this is going to work out with your health. You've got a difficult situation that you're dealing with that you can't talk to anybody else about. You fill in the blank, and your mind is racing. How do we slow down? Is it we go somewhere and we sit down and we just decompress for a while? Is it get involved? Is, is it to do whatever we might do? Yeah. All right, can you still hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Are we all right? Ah, uh, so what? All right. So, yeah, it, it's always something, isn't it? it? You know what someone said? When the devil fell from heaven, he fell on all the micros, mic, microphones and all the churches in the world. All right, listen. Here's what it is. When it comes to you and I, in our life, in the situation that we're dealing with, the only way that you and I can slow down is what that verse says. Let me read the, the first part again. But those, here it is, 
who wait on the Lord. Do you know what it is in your life and my life? It's when you and I decide to wait on a person. When we decide that we're going to wait on a person whose name is Jesus Christ to help make whatever it is in our decision, then guess what happens? What happens is with us is something will change. And what will change is not your circumstance. It's, it's not what's going to happen with you or I. That's not what I'm here for today. You're not going to leave here today and your circumstance is going to change. But what I challenge you with is this, that when you and I wait on the Lord, here's what happens. Oh, we back? Okay, great. All right. Here's what happens. Again, this is so important. I want you to get this. If you're here every week, you kind of know this, but we have so many visitors every week. This display that we have is about a person. This book. And so when you read it, it's speaking to you in your spirit about Jesus Christ. And so Jesus Christ is there for you today, no matter what decisions you have to make this week. You say, well, Dallas, I I'm willing to wait on the Lord. But what, what happens when we do that? See, when we, we get into trouble because we are patterned from little on to be successful by me, you, you got to do it. You got to make it happen. You got to get after it. You got to get your resume and everybody know. You got to get up and you've got to do this. You've got to excel and you, nobody else is going to do it for you. You're patterned that way. And I'm here to tell you today as a brother and sister in Christ, you know what will happen in your life? If you take a deep breath and you say, you know what? I see this word and I'm going to wait on Jesus. Here's what happens. There's three things, three things that are going to happen in your life. First of all, those who wait on the Lord, your strength is going to be renewed. Now, let me look at it. Let me share with you actually the original language what that means. That means that you are going to have not just a renewed strength. You're going to have a new strength that you didn't have. Do you remember, you, you, you might still be in this phase, but, you know, when the, your, your kids are little, and uh, they're just, moms, you know, they're just driving you crazy. And you don't know how to just rest. You don't know how to get out of that. But what are you going to do? You don't see, you know, you see, you know, they got still years to get older, you, to grow and all those different things. You're right there. You don't, how, don't know how to get out of that situation. You need to have a new strength. You can't get it on your own. The very first thing that happens is you get a strength that you couldn't get any other way. That's what's so important. You decided to show up today. That's the first thing. You get a new strength. You get to place where you say, I can't take this anymore. It's too difficult. Something's got to happen. And here's what the Lord does. The Lord will do it in a way that you can't imagine. And not only renewed, but in the original language, it means a new, not renewed, a new strength. You need, some of you today, some of us, you need a new strength. You need, you need to think about your situation in a way that you never thought before. And that's what Jesus does. Secondly, they shall mount with wings like eagles. So I'm going to ask you a question. Would you rather, I know the answer, so I'm going to ask you anyways. Would you rather be a chicken or an eagle? Do you ever see a chicken fly? Isn't it amazing? You go around and you check if you've ever been a visit and you took take if you had your kids with you, you go and on a farm or so and you'll run and the kids will run after the chicken. They they fly for about five feet and then they're back on the ground again. And they fly and they just kind of scuttle all around and 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 you know what? There, there's no symmetry, there's no smoothness to them, and they're just going all around. Like, but then when you walk outside, especially this time of year in spring or summer, you'll look up and you'll see an eagle. And it's amazing when you see an eagle, because this is what the Lord wants to teach us today. When it comes to your life, we look up, you see an eagle. Now, here's the question. Do you want to flap your wings all the time, or do you want to soar on the Spirit of God? That's what you can do. When you see the gracefulness of an eagle in the sky, that, that eagle is not dependent so much on 
its wings as it is the wind. The Holy Spirit that I try and get you to see every week is so powerful in your life, whatever the expectation is, whatever the job loss, whatever the heartache you're going through, the Lord is going to give you a whole new way of looking. You say, Dallas, you don't know what I'm going through. You know what I don't. But I never want to underestimate who Jesus is in your life. He will give you, if you are willing to wait on that person through his word, he will give you a renewed, a new strength by waiting on him. Because when you do that, you will begin to fly in a way that you are soaring in this life through his spirit. In other words, you flow through the rhythm of grace. So the third thing that we look at today. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. You know, this is interesting. I try to really look this up. I, I get confused sometimes. And, and when, I, when I'm trying to figure things out, I don't know if it's my, because I'm dyslexic. I don't know what it is, but I can't quite put it together. So anyways, I kept researching, researching. And, and they really don't know when how an eagle, when it, and it's in the air, how with its feathers it actually is able to regrow its, its feathers. And how that when you mount up, when you soar, when you fly in a certain way, there is something that cannot be explained. See, that's who God is. They can't explain it. They don't know when, when an eagle continues to soar and you mount up as wings as eagles, that that newness that you have, that you continue to have, you can't figure it out, but it'll happen. It'll happen if you believe. So the question today is in your situation, are you slowing down enough to where you can you, you know, I, let me give you a statistic now. I want you to listen to this. I want you to grasp this. You're driving on the freeway. Probably all of you have done this. We shouldn't do it, but you're driving on the freeway and you, you use your text for a minute. I know we shouldn't do it. Try not to do it, but anyways. And you shouldn't do it. So let me give you this example. You're, you're texting. If you text on the freeway going 55 to 60 miles an hour for five seconds, you have just driven a football field. You realize that? Text for five seconds and look down at you've just driven the length of a football field. See, we can't wait to get to that place or like to where we are so, we don't slow down enough. What the Lord is saying is he wants to help you today. He's going to give you a whole new way of looking at it. If you look to him and you wait, you're willing to wait. Not on any circumstance changing, not on any check in the mail, not on any other person, whatever it might be, a new job, nothing. You wait on Jesus Christ and who he is. And things will change. But you've got to slow down. And when you slow down and you wait on the Lord and you're willing, you know what it is? It's just a trust issue. It's a trust issue that you become new. There's some way that the Lord works in your life that you can't imagine. And then finally, here's what happens. I thought, why is it saying this like this in, the, in, in this work, in, in God's work? Why does it say, and they, this is what's going to happen. Now the example is, now we know eagles don't run, right? Okay. They, they don't run and they don't walk. So it's an example for us. The last part of this verse is for us. This is what it says. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Why does I always say, you know, you're going to walk and then you run. I mean, you're runners in here. You've got to warm up. You've got to walk. You've got to stretch and then you run. Why does it say they should run and not be weary and walk and not faint? Here's why. Here's what the Lord is telling us today. You're running right now a race. You're in it right now, whatever is happening in your life. And you have got to slow down. But you, you say, Dallas, you don't know. And you know what? You probably are in some type of pressure cooker. That's what you're in. And it's stressful for what you're in. And there is a lot of stress what's going on. And you don't know how you're going to handle it. You're running in that race. And the Lord says, you know what? I'm going to be there with you. You've waited on me, so I'm going to run with you. It doesn't mean that we stop everything in life and go sit down in a chair and the Lord's going to do everything. 
You still got to do what you're doing in life. And sometimes that it, it's so frustrating because everything's moving so fast. But when the Lord is there with you, he gives you those decisions. Sometimes you got to make quick. And he'll do it if you wait on him. And so you run and guess what happens? You ever see a horse in the Kentucky Derby or whatever it might be? What happens after the horse wins the race? That's after they win the race and they're tired and they're exhausted. They have to, you see the jockey, it, it will kill the horse unless the jockey doesn't slow the horse down and actually takes a lap. Here's what I want you to get today. You are in that situation. You've got to slow down. But when you slow down, the Lord is going to speed it up for you. Let me say that again. When you are willing to slow down in your decision making, the Lord will speed up the circumstance, the decision. In other words, it's going to happen faster for you the more you're willing to wait on the Lord. The more that you say, Lord, I give this to you, the more he's going to bring it together. And when he does, and everything's happening so fast, all of a sudden you have won. Now here's what happens. Here's what happens when we are willing to let the Lord do that. This is it. You're going to, you're going to mess it up. I'm going to mess it up. If we got everything we wanted right now, what the Lord does is he takes us through. He doesn't do these things to us that the world throws at us, that the devil hates us so much and all these different things that you faced in life. That's the devil. But the Lord can take those situations and everything that you faced and he will speed it up to the place to where all of a sudden it's over and you say to yourself, how did I make it through that? You waited on the Lord. That's how you made it through. And then the Lord says, you know what? Now I'm going to bless you. And after everything, after you have run this race, this certain trial in life, now I'm going to bless you. You've won. Because you know what? If I gave it to you beforehand, you'd just blow it. You would just not be to the place to where you could handle my blessing. So when you are at the place, and we're going to look at this one more verse, and we're going to close. And here's what I want you to get. You might be at the place today to where you say, Dallas, I'm there. I don't think I can do this much longer. I don't know how it's going to change. I want you to know. That's when the blessing is close. It's close. Because the Lord knows that he's taken you through. He's tested you. You've trusted him. You've waited on him. And through the process, he's renewed your strength. As he's renewed your strength, that which takes place, you begin to soar with his spirit. You don't live life like everybody else. You know that the spirit of God that works in you, anything could change in any second. So you, you know what? Lord, you got it. You've got this. You get the phone call, things happen. Lord, Lord you've got this. You've got this. I'm going to wait on you. And people are going to say, you know what? In your circumstances, I, I would think that you would be more upset or more tense. You know what? The eagle in the sky he flies in the wind. The spirit of God you're led with, that spirit. We don't think about that enough in our life. And as the Lord leads you in your spirit and your life begins to start to flow and you wait on him and you have that new strength. What will happen is the same that we don't know how those feathers regenerate with an eagle really. The same way you will not be able to explain what the Lord did, how he's done it. And then on top of it, he blesses you. So know when you're just at the place you've about given up, I want you to know that you've run that race and now you can walk and see life in a holy way. So we're going to close with this other verse because I want you to pay attention. We need to slow down. We need to wait on the Lord and now we need to close by paying attention. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, in verses 3 through 5. This is our fleshly body that we live in, and that's what the Lord's telling us in His Word. Though we walk, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Your, your, your war is not against that, that person in this life, whoever it is. That, that's not your war, that's what your battle. That's not who you're really fighting against. We're reminded here today that 
about what? Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, it's not about a tank or a horse or a gun or whatever it might be. It's about your weapon that you have to win that battle, whatever it might look at, is spiritual. You're going to win today in your marriage. You're going to win today in your personal life. You're going to win today in your job situation. Whatever it may, you fill in the blank. Whatever it is, you're going to win because you recognize the weapon that you carry is spiritual. But you've got to pay attention to that. You gotta pay attention. Let, let me give you an example. Uh, my girls a while ago were getting on me because I had the, I had this uh, mole on my face, and it's been there for years. And you know, it was, it was dark and everything, you know, whatever. But I and so I, I had to go to a dermatologist, and so I go to the dermatologist, and I I started to pay attention to what was going on there. So as I go to the dermatologist and. Again, they were on me, and finally I ended up going. They actually made the appointment, or probably wouldn't have gone anyways. But, uh, so they make the appointment, and Val actually goes with me to make sure that I go. Thank you, Alexis. So anyway, so I go to the dermatologist. Boom, the door's open. And, and I love physicians. Some doctors aren't you know, like this, but this nice lady, but this is just how she was. So she walks in the door and you know she's she's kind of short and everything. She comes over and looks at my face and, and she says, uh, "Hey, how going?" You know, she's talking kind of fast and she's in a hurry and, and she sees two spots on my face and she goes, uh, "Well, give me a little bit about your background." I said, "Do uh, uh, this and I'm a pastor." And she goes, "Well, you know, what about you know being outside of her?" I said, "Well, you know, I lived in Florida for ten years and I had a uh, lawn service and a landscaping service at two different times and and." Uh, well, what kind of sun lotion do you use? He said, well, I, I don't know, maybe an eight. <laughs> eight. She comes over and looks at my face. She grabs her face like this. She goes, you have ruined your face. Look at it. I'm not kidding. That's what she said. That's what she said. Look at your I, I, Eight, that's nothing. you got to have at least a 30. You know, she's going on it, and then she pulls her weapons out. She's got a needle, and she's got a knife. You know? And she's coming at me, all right? And so I'm sitting there, and I sit down, and she comes in, and she, she was so good at whack, whack, choo, stuck that knee, went, choo, choo, you know, and it was over. And then she just left. And then I thought she did something really nice. She goes, you know, we got this special medicine for you is you, when you leave, and, you know, it'll really help. It's amazing what it can do, and, you know, for your face. And, 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 and I go, oh, great, man, that's nice. She goes, boom, but she goes flying out the door. She's done, so, so. And then we'll call you, let you know. Thankfully, everything was fine, and, and I think the Lord, you know, was the cancer thing. It's like, why am I going here? And and I, I say, you know, she's talking about this certain messenger's name of it, and, and oh yeah, that'll be eighty dollars. <laughs> you can't know, I'm sorry, I don't want it. Forget it. <laughs> but it was all like like this, you know. But here's, the key, here's what I want you to get. She was, it was amazing. How she knew how to use. I mean, this is really, really small on my face, but she was so unbelievable after years of experience of her field that she knew exactly what she was doing with that needle and with that unbelievable small knife. Whack, whack. I mean, it was just, I was it. I mean, she was out there in like 30 seconds. You know, I mean, if you ever had that, like a knife coming at you like this in your face, you know what I'm talking about? It was so fast. But here's the thing, here's what I want to get. I want you to know that the weapon that you underestimate, that you have, is spiritual. I want you to know the enemy that you face is spiritual. And the devil comes at you with an unbelievable amount of craftiness and and firepower that we have no idea how he can hit us and hit us hard. And if you're not ready with a weapon, and you say, well, Dallas, what are those weapons? Well, let's go back and read this in more close. What are the weapons that we have when we slow down and we let the Lord work on our life and the Spirit is moving within us and we pay attention, really attention to the battle? Here's what happens. For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against, notice now it's a thought process, against the knowledge of God, 
bringing every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ. For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Pay attention to the weapon that you have, not your enemy. See, the weapons that we have today, we have prayer. You got the Word of God. You've got the Holy Spirit that's within you. And you've got other brothers and sisters in Christ. That's four unbelievable weapons that you have in your arsenal. And when you recognize it, it all is working with the Spirit in your life. That those weapons are not dependent on how much money you have. They're not dependent on how smart you are, how old or young you are. They're not dependent on anything, how we look, how strong, nothing. They are dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is spiritual. It is not an it, it is a he. The Lord Jesus Christ has given you and I these amazing weapons to win. The devil is a fallen angel. He is not, it's not like we think so much. God is not the Lord Jesus Christ against the devil. It is so, he is so much more powerful. The devil comes at you and he makes your problem. Do you think that your problem today is bigger than your God? That's what we do. Jesus Christ gives you, gives me in your spirit. And this is what happens when we close. When you have those weapons and they're spiritual and you know who Jesus is and you wait on him in your life and you slow down and he equips you for that battle. You pay attention to Jesus Christ and not the enemy. And when we do, every stronghold that's in your life will tear down. They can't stand. Here's what I'm telling you. It can't stand. Whatever it is that's coming at you, they will be torn down and you take them because it's talking about your thought process. The devil comes at your mind they say, there's no way out of this today. You've tried every angle imaginable. You've waited all these years. You can't do it. You're right. You're right. The devil's right in that area. We can't do it on our own. Only through the power of Jesus Christ and his authority. See, the devil has power, but you have power and authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And when we fight those battles, whatever they are, you take them. And it's closes with that. I close today. And you take them and you put them underneath the obedience of Jesus Christ. What does that say then? You just spend time with the Lord and whatever it is, Lord, you got this. You got it handled. And I'm always going to look to you. And you're going to fight my battles. He says, that's all I need. Just let me do it. And you know what you'll do? You'll pick up that sword. You'll pick up that weapon. And you'll go to strike the enemy. And the Lord will do it right in front of you. That's what he is. You don't even have to do it. He just wants you and I to believe. Whatever it is today, if it's a temptation, if it's the way that you think about life, if it's your job situation, if it's you hurt in such a way that you can't deal with it anymore. The good Lord will renew you, will give you a new way of seeing life. And you can't explain it. And all we got to do is slow down and pay attention that the battle is the Lord's, not mine. Whatever strong one it is today, you will trust him enough that you'll get it ready to strike. And the Lord says, that's all I wanted from you was just to trust me. And he will win that battle. You will be exhausted. You might be soaked in sweat after all this time. You might be just drained. But then, after that, you will walk 
as it said in Isaiah, in the newness of life, in the blessing that you will have after you have run and fought in that battle. We will say, Lord, I don't want to go through this again. But I have so trusted you, and I've taken on your weapons to fight these battles. I've paid attention to you and not the enemy, but to you, Lord, and to trust you enough that you will honestly thank you. you say, Lord, I, I know this might not ever be over till eternity, but you have equipped me. Every time the enemy comes in my mind to tear at my life and to hurt me and to destroy me and to make me think that I'm worthless, I'm going to know that my confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do that, and when I do that, you, me, brothers and sisters in Christ, we will never lose. Let's pray. As their heads are bowed today, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, we have what's called an invitation. We have many people come forward even after the service, and I like to say that even now, maybe whatever it is that want to speak in your heart today. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want you to pay attention to the Spirit of God who's speaking to you even right now. And, and it's to you. Right now, you. First of all, as a brother and sister in Christ, I want to ask you a question. We're praying right now, it's just you and the Lord. It's just you and Jesus. Where is it that you're confused? Where is it that you need help? Where is it that you're just drained? Where is it that you're not sure? Where the devil has stolen your confidence. Where is it? And now I want you to see Jesus. And I want you to see that he has equipped you in your spirit, in prayer, with brothers and sisters in Christ, with his word and that spirit of God that is within you. You will never lose if you just trust him. Will you wait on him today? My brothers and sisters in Christ, please, don't give up. Don't give up. The Lord will strengthen your heart. He will strengthen your heart today. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, we're going to just give an invitation and just ask you to come forward. And I'll pray with you and show you that Jesus Christ has given you a gift, and that's his life. He lived this life perfectly. He shed his perfect blood once and for all on the cross of Calvary. And all you have to do is accept him today. Just pray and ask him in your heart. It's a gift. You can find heaven today. You can win every victory because through the victory of death, hell, and the grave, Jesus won through the resurrection. And you can win too. Fathers, we come to you today. Lord is... Uh, we close, Lord, with the hearts of so many that, Lord, I know we all get ahead of you. We all need to wait on you. And Jesus, maybe some of us have given up today. You know our hearts. Lord, may we know that you renew, you give us new strength. It can't be explained. And we can soar in life on your spirit. And Father, you will equip us to win. And life takes on all of so, Lord, encourage us today. Father, if there's someone here that needs you, doesn't know you today, may a friend bring a friend, may a family member bring someone, I'll pray with them, and they can find through you, Jesus, the way to heaven. You're the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with us today as Bonnie leads?